So this is lesson six in the IOF learning path. And this lesson is about trying to figure out how to track events. So when we say tracking events as a developer, what we mean is, is how do you know as a developer which things are happening? Now in the last lesson we talked about um, the control flow of your programming and how your application is going to jump from method to method to method. And you're going to decide the order in which things jump around. However, um, your code will get very, very complicated. And if I move this Xcode project a little bit and I show you this other Xcode project, which was the one that we created using our control panel, when you look at these different plugins, it really doesn't matter which plugin you're talking about. Most of these plugins are pretty sophisticated and they have lots and lots of different events and lots and lots of different code and, um, and lots of things happening. And it might even feel as if they're happening at the same time because they happen very, very quickly. So sometimes it's useful to try to figure out as a developer when your events are firing um, so that you can get a better um, grip on how the program is behaving when you want to make changes that really makes it easier. So we're going to get a look at, at tracking those events. So when, when we're having this discussion about tracking events, we're also going to be introducing a new concept um, and a new tool in Xcode. And we touched on it a little bit in the very first lesson about understanding Xcode and how it was laid out. But this is called the Output Console. And so I used this center button up here in the top right choice under View. There were three buttons. And I expanded the Output Console, which is blank right now. So when I launch this application, let's go ahead and get it running in the simulator so I can show you how this Output Console works. When we launch an application and the application's running in the simulator, or on a device. We could also plug in a device and install it on a device. We can use this output console down here to, to um, learn all kinds of interesting things about our application. And so some of the ways to do that are quite sophisticated and some of the ways to do that are quite simple. But the, the thing to understand here is, is the developer, you get to decide how the output console behaves. And so in our application here, it's doing nothing. There are no messages, there's no useful information in here. And so we'll want to begin to use that to help us understand some things. So let's just do a simple, simple example. And the statement to print something to the output console is nslog. So we use the statement nslog and then we provided a string, which is going to start with the ampersand and then quote. This is printed to the output console. So we can use this log statement is what we call that to print to the output console and I'm going to recompile this and rerun this and then I'll show you this output console and you can see that our message is printed to the console just like that so the reason that this was put here is because we asked Xcode to put it here with this nslog statement so there's, there are some more sophisticated ways to use the nslog statement and we won't get into that but um, we do want you to understand that you can strategically place log statements throughout your code to help you understand when things are running. So an example might be, and a good tip would be, I like to start the name of the, the, um, the name of my output to the console with the method name. So I usually just paste the method name. And then I like to write myself a little note that's meaningful. So in the did finish launching with options, uh, method, I might write something like application div finish launching. And this will help me understand when I run the application that, that the code reached this point of execution. So let's take this code and let's move it up here. And let's take another copy of that code. I just copied and paste. And I'll also write in here application div finish loading my root view controller. So we're going to place two nslog statements in here. The first one we're going to say application did begin, did begin the, this method, the method. And then we'll, we'll load our view controller and then we'll output another statement to the console. And so I'm demonstrating this simply so that you can get an understanding of how useful this can become. So our code reached this point and it output this to the console. Then our code executed some additional um, lines that we had written here. And then we wrote this other 
output to the console. So that, that would print it here and that helps us understand. So to take this um, example one step further, let's go over here to the root view controller. And remember it's got two separate files of its own. And let's put a little log statement inside the view did load method in our root view controller. And you'll see here this is in the view did load method, or this is in my root view controller. So let's save that and let's run this again. And what you'll see here are three output um, lines in our console. So if we look at um, our original app delegate file, you'll see that we output this line of code, application did begin method. Then we instantiated a new instance of a view controller, a root view controller. Then we printed the did finish launching with options um, finish loading method right here. And then you'll see the console printed the view did load. So you'll notice that this is after these two statements to the log. And some people might get confused by that and wonder, and this is, this is an important concept to understand. We would have expected this to print then this to print, which would be this statement here, and then lastly, this to print. But because this took a little bit of time for iOS to execute, even though it seems instant, it does take a little bit of time, it actually reached this line of our code before this was done. So we can do a little bit of an experiment here, and we can say, let's put this code up here be right at the beginning of you did load before we do all these other things and let's see if it changes anything so we'll run that and we'll look at our output console and you'll see that it didn't change anything hmm that's interesting so the view did load and this is this is um, an important concept the view did load method is not completing until a few milliseconds after we call our code and you'll see as you become um, getting more comfortable with your your program logic how that becomes important so we're gonna jump over to another project here I'm gonna close the simulator and I'm gonna move this Xcode project to the foreground and this is the Xcode project that we created using our buzz touch control panel and it's quite a bit more sophisticated and we're gonna explore how this buzz touch source code is really gonna make our lives easier when we're dealing with the output console so in the very first part of your projects did finish launching with options method, which we know fires first, and it's in our application delegate file. We have this variable or this flag called show debug info, and it's set to true. And what this does, I'm going to go ahead and launch the console, and what's, what this does is in our source code, there are all kinds of outputs already included in the code that print to the console so that you can see what's happening in the project. So all of these outputs, line by line by line, help us understand what's happening. So there's a strategy to the way that these um, built-in outputs are, are being printed to the console. So if you'll notice here, they all start with some kind of, a, some kind of an object name and then a colon and then some kind of a note. So the object name is going to match the name of the file in the project that's actually doing this part of the code. So BT application, BT device, um, BT network state, app delegate. So all of these lines of code are useful when we want to begin to debug. So I'm going to clear this and I'm going to demonstrate to you how useful this is. I'm going to say clear and I just click the clear button to clear our console. I'm going to get our simulator to the front. Now the output console is blank and our application is running. Now I'm going to, I'm just going to hit this um, email harbor master button or, or menu item. And when I click that email harbor master button, you'll see all kinds of output here in the console which will help us understand what happened. So I tap the email harbor master button and you can see that there's probably a dozen or so lines that appear in our console and it can show us the menu list, they, there was a did select row method, the application got a new screen, the view controller loaded the new screen, 
and we can look line by line and try to do a little bit of a, a debug, if you will, to try to figure out how this is working. This becomes very, very useful um, if you get to the point where, re where you're using your own plugins or plugins that other people create for you, or if you're having problems with your code, get good at understanding how the output console works. Don't, don't be bashful to clear the console. Um, use a different method. And then you can see here, every time you tap or load or do something like that, you're going to see um, some output. And that's all built, for, built in for you into the code. Hopefully, when people make plugins for you, they'll also include debug information so you can see it. And certainly when we, when we start to learn about how to make our own plugins, we'll show you how to take advantage of this, of this automatic output. So lastly in this lesson, we're going we're gonna to take this show debug info and we're going to set this to false and I'll show you why. I'll clear this and I'll relaunch this application. And what you'll see, because we set the debug info to false, is there's nothing in the output console. This is useful um, in, the, in the fact that Printing all of this to the console does take a little bit of time for iOS to do, and so you'll want to set it to false before you publish your project to an app store or install it on any devices, just to, aim, just to gain that additional um, performance. It's not that big of a deal, but it is useful. So I'm going to go back to our other project for a moment. I'm going to close our simulator, and whoops, and we're going to um, just review this real fast. So we use NS log to print to the output console in order to help us as developers understand when events happen. So you might have a button on the screen and you might want to trap when it's happening. So you could put a log statement right below your button to print to this log. We didn't talk about some advanced ways to format the output. Um, we didn't talk about um, how to do um, other types of debugging and other types of um, performance tracking but the output console is very, very common as developers. We use it all the time, and it's very, very useful to get good at understanding how it works and using it yourself. So even though this lesson is called Tracking Events, it's not really um, a lesson designed to help you understand when um, iOS is telling you about these events. It's a lesson designed to help you understand that you can track events um, strategically by using the output console. If you begin to work on projects that aren't BuzzTouch related, um, you'll at that point in your development um, progress, you'll be a little bit more experienced and you'll have um, by then a better understanding of how this works and how you can track events in other ways. But in the beginning, you'll want to just track events using the output console so that you can see with your eyes um, by opening the console and closing the console and clearing it and relaunching it and all that um, when these events are current, occurring because you um, explicitly said, print this to the output log as soon as this happens.